We're fishing in the estuary today and it's an environment that so many of us grew up learning to fish. Today I'm with kayak fishing guru Justin Wilmer in his backyard and one of the structures we're focusing on is that of shallows and particularly that spot where they drop into the channels in the slightly deeper water. We're targeting some flathead and whatever else the day throws at us but the influence of tides can play a big part in how you fish those and very often a stealthy approach is the way to go and today we're armed with exactly that, a couple of great kayaks, some plastics, we're going to go and see what we can turn up. Your backyard mate, you lead the way. Yeah, magic, let's get into it. That tide's coming in now so they're pushing right up on that edge, that's for sure. Don't want to get his head out of the water, so I'll shake that plastic out. Roll him mate. into the net, beautiful. All right. He's away. Another one off to go bigger, mate. Yep. That's a little bit better. Nice fish. You can see then a lot of people get, they get in a bit of a hurry to get the plastic into the yak. Don't worry about being in a hurry. That plastic's nice and soft, so once the fish hits it, they'll probably rattle it a few times. So slow down's probably the, the number one bit of advice I could give to anyone fishing soft plastics. Get that plastic right up in the shallows, let it hit the bottom, give it a few hops, make sure it gets back down to the bottom, hits the bottom again, because that's where these flathead are laying. Nice little flatty, not a monster fish, but you'll often find a lot of small flathead like that sort of, that sort of size. And I always say, where there's smoke, there's fire. If you're getting a few flathead that size, it's worth persisting in the area a bit, and you'll probably find there's a lot of little males around and then you just got to catch that big female one that's in amongst them. <laughs> Quite a bit of weight, this one. A little bit of incoming tide's got them moving, that's for sure. All right. Nice fish. And Justin's talking about not hurrying before with the plastics. It's exactly the same when you're landing fish. Just let them wait till they're ready to be led into a net. You rush the process, it's very often when you'll pull hooks. It's going to slowly lead this Flatty up into the net. Best way to do it is when they're coming close. Just get the net in the water and try and slide them into it. Just like that. All right. A lot of different sizes for these in terms of your legal size limits. A lot of different states around Australia. It's worth staying abreast of those, but they do make a great feed. Uh, you can catch eight or 10 on a good day out there. Yeah, Take a couple yeah. home for a feed and you're doing very well. These ones are going to swim another day. They're a beautiful oh, fish. Beautiful. It's flown off there. Not a bad flatty there, Justin, I reckon. Slightly different tack now, the tide started running in. We're just fishing around the edge of a weed bed that's now starting to flood. Whereas we were jigging plastics down the ledge before, we just started slowly rolling these plastics out of the weeds at the moment. It's a sneaky little tactic of Justin's and I reckon that's about the third retrieve I've had like that and we're away. So, pace to sometimes vary those retrieves until you start having a little bit of success. There we go, lovely fish. Just sitting there waiting to ambush stuff around the weeds. A little Z-Man wiggled its way out and looked just like what he was after, I reckon. The flathead are prime ambush feeders, which you can see by the shape of their body. He's just used to putting himself in the right spot, doesn't want to exert a lot of energy, and then wait for unsuspecting prey to come past, and then he's got a very good turn of speed, which means he'll grab a lure whether it's jigged or slowly rolled. It's just a case of finding where they're most likely to lie and then presenting a lure to them. And if you can be sneaky in the way of getting up on them in something low lying like a kayak, it just makes it all the, the easier to sometimes tempt them. I'll get this guy back in the water. There he goes, shooting back to his weedy little hidey hole. And that's what he's taken a liking to at the moment, a slowly rolled Z-Man. Big paddle tail on it, wiggles its way. Gone with a really nice golden fleck, throws a bit of light out there in what's a bit of a gloomy day. Jigged or rolled, a lure like that's gonna get you plenty of bites.
pretty tough time fishing the estuary, which is when the tide's starting to rise and cover a lot of ground, which means you often have to search a bit to find your fish. Try and find that bit of a pattern where you can find a concentration of fish feeding in a particular way, and that's what you want to do because that's how you're going to catch the most fish. A good way sometimes is to, to get out and search with not just the boat but also your eyes and having a kayak that allows you to stand is obviously a big advantage. At the moment, sitting about a metre or so of shallow rubbly ground, it's mixed weed and, and sort of gravelly sort of bottom. And as the case now, just standing up a little bit higher lets me see the colour changes. It allows me to prospect a little bit better with my cast. Cast to the edge of colour change. It's often a great way to find flathead and broom and whiting and, and species like that, they often like a bit of protection when they're in the shallows feeding. So anywhere where there's a colour change, good chance you're gonna find them there. So don't be shy to get up and have a bit of a look around sometimes. It can change the complexion of your day. Oh. This one's slightly better, we're getting there. Getting there, Justin. There's a lovely little dusky flathead. Well and truly can't see any plastic there because it has absolutely engulfed that little softy. On the more versatile lures we can chase these in the estuary on. And that was a case of just finding a lovely little weed edge, good colour change, getting that jig head to the bottom then slowly rolling it out for a few metres before letting it go back down. And it seems to be as that tide's rolling in, that little slow rolled approach, that little paddle tail wiggling away, it's getting the interest of these guys. Those fins going, a little breather, and off to the depths. See you later. When you set up the yak fishing, there's a few key accessories you'll grab. You'll probably make sure you've got a good seat, paddle, PFD, and away you go. But a great accessory when you're fishing from the kayak is an anchor, some form of anchoring device. So whether it's a stakeout pole, uh, a standard sand anchor or even a grabber that's just like a clamp you can clamp onto a tree. Just a means of holding yourself in position so you can really focus your casts on an area. So when we set up our kayak for anchoring, what I've set up on here is an anchor running rig and basically all it is is a, a loop of cord on two pulleys, one at the front and one at the back and it allows you to shift that anchor from the front of your kayak down to the back of your kayak. So all we have is that loop and then off that we've got another piece of line coming that we just attach to our anchor line. So by shifting that from the front to the back, we can swing our kayak and face into the current and work that area. We can then swing it back the other way so that we're facing down current and work that area as well. So realistically, you can fish 360 degrees around your kayak when you're anchored. And also you don't go flying past that nice gutter or bit of structure that you're wanting to fish. <clears throat> so I've just got a Cooper poly anchor here. I'm just gonna deploy that anchor and I'll show you how our anchor running rig works. All right, so I'll drop a bit of rope out there. So my anchor's out the back there and you can see my anchor's grabbed, but you don't really want to be anchoring side onto the current or you put yourself at risk of tipping out of the kayak. So what we've done, we've attached our, our line to the anchor running rig. We'll let our anchor run out. And now we can shift our anchor just by moving the pulley we can shift it to the front of the kayak. So uh, we're now anchored so that our, our front of our kayak's into the current and we can pepper all of that area there with casts so we can cover that area really well. To move the kayak anchor, we simply slide the pulley system so that our anchor moves to the back of the kayak and you'll see the nose will swing around and now we can cover this whole area as well with casts. So by having an anchor running rig, we can quick and easily move our anchor from the front to the back of the kayak and effectively fish 360 degrees. One of the hardest aspects of fishing out of a kayak is very often the fact that it's difficult to control a kayak. Not so anymore with the native watercraft Mariner 12.5 and this propel system that they've got. It's a beautiful little pedal setup that allows you to pedal forwards and backwards and I think it's one of the greatest inventions for the kayak angler because what it allows you to do is just stay precisely where you want to be in the water at any given time and when you're retrieving lures that's very often the key to making that lifelike imitation of part of the food chain and getting those bites. 
There we go. Shaking his head like a flathead. It's a case of just drifting down that weed edge and just a mixture of initially hopping the plastic and then slow rolling it out. The key being to try and keep the kayak you in the plastic at that same position in the current. This is not a bad flatty. Oh, here we go. Stay on, stay on, stay on. Stay on. Come on. Oh. Very pleasurable way to fish with light spin outfits. Flicking your soft plastics as you go. Any spin rod in the six foot six to seven foot range. Thread line reel in that 2500 size. Go down to 1500 if you want, four pound braid. And a leader, probably no lighter than six pound. Eight to 10 is a good starting point for flathead because they pretty sharp little mouths and they can rub off those lighter leaders. But light outfit, match it up with a good plastic. Fish those edges, you'll be having fun in no time. Happy camper, one of our great little predators of the estuary. Feels like not a bad little flatty. I've, uh, I've upped the jig head weight a bit because the tides come up a bit, so we're fishing in a little bit deeper water, a little bit more run, so I've got a 3 8 ounce head on there now. And that gold rush minnows, it seems to be doing the job on them today, seems to be doing the damage. A nice table size fish. Handy accessories you've seen that we carry with us. Landing net makes it nice and easy to land a fish. Lip grips, boga grips makes it nice and easy to handle the fish. And it also makes it easy for, for a release in the water as well. In this case, I'm going to swing him around and slide him into the ice box. So you can see there on the back of the Mariner 12.5, there's plenty of room uh, to put an ice box on the back there so you can take a feed out with you and also put some ice in there and make sure you look after your catch. So when you bring it home, Nice and tasty with your fish, chips and salad, so everybody at home is happy. You can see on the back of there, that goes right back there. We've got a big flat platform. We actually use these yaks for camping out of as well. So you can have an ice box, dry bag with your tent and accessories on the back there. You've also got plenty of room in that front hatch, so you can load a fair bit of gear on this yak and head off for a couple of days fishing. If you're wanting to get into chasing a few flathead from the kayak, it's a great species to start with. They love crunching lures, but one of the key things to remember is just to keep it simple. So we generally travel with a tray of jig heads and one of our soft plastics wallets loaded up with soft plastics ready to go. So you don't have to have a lot of gear. We generally stick with a few different colours. So if it's dirty water, we generally go for a darker colour or an overcast day. Natural colours for the cleaner, clearer water. And if it's not working at all, then you always can bang a fluoro colour on them. They, they will catch a lot of fish, those, those sorts of colours. Jig head wise, because we've got to rig our soft plastic onto a jig head. So for shallower stuff, generally I'll fish a quarter ounce. And as we get out off the channel edge and the drop offs or the run picks up a bit quicker, we'll step up to a 3 8 ounce jig head. But that's a good starting point. If you've got some quarter ounce and some 3 8 then you're doing pretty well. Uh, for smaller plastics, you can run a 1-0 or a 2-0 hook, but don't worry about the flatty, they've got a big mouth and they, they'll get it around that lure no problem. So if you're fishing something like this 3-inch paddle tail, a 3-0 hook is a good starting point. So there you go, if you're, um, if you're hopping it and bouncing it off the bottom, uh, general rule is, is the lighter the better to get it down there. And if you're slow rolling it, you may be winding that plastic a little bit quicker, so you may want to up your head weight so that you're just bumping the bottom or you're just touching the top of that weed, bringing those fish up to feed on the lure. So that's a few plastics and a few jig heads. Get out there and give it a go. <laughs> the battler, what do we got here? Pitch the plastic on the edge of the weed bed and it's been nailed. I'm suspicious it's Trevally or a tailor or something like that. What do we got? I'll get a look at him soon. Yeah, tailor. Lovely. Oh, they are battlers. And they're good at chewing through leaders as well. So I might try and get him in the net as quickly as possible. There we go, gotcha. Lovely little fish. Here's the tailor. Aren't they? Magnificent hunter. You just gotta look at that head. It's made for terrorizing bait fish in the shallows and out in the ocean as well. They do come in and this chopper size into the estuaries. As they head up north, 
they start getting a fair bit of size. This is what we call a chopper size tailor. They love a well presented plastic. They don't know that I'm out here targeting flathead at the moment. He's gotten away, but a whole lot of fun. Now, they don't like being out of water for too long, so without getting done by his teeth, and they've got some fantastic teeth on them, you need to watch out for. We're going to pull that out and get him back in the water. See you later. Right, eh? Back to business. The fish are chewing. Again, we're just working the edge. Those fish, they're an ambush predator of the flathead, so they love to hang just on the edge of the weed or in the patches of sand and um, wait for any sort of prawn or bait fish to go past. We're fishing with a, a three inch paddle tail. So the great thing about a paddle tail plastic is that its little tail will kick along whether you're, um, whether you're slow rolling or whether you're hopping the lure around. You've got plenty of tail action in the lure. He's absolutely scoffed that down. So in that case there, I was doing what we call hopping, which is basically allowing the lure to sink to the bottom. And then we give it a few twitches, hop it up off the bottom, and then we ensure that we let it sink back to the bottom again. So that it hits the bottom, puts up a little puff of sand or stirs up the bottom and gets that flathead fired up. The other way we fish them, especially when the, when the tide gets up a bit and we want to cover the flats is, is slow rolling. And basically that just means a slow wind of the rod with the plastic sort of just bumping the bottom or just skimming across the top of the weed so it doesn't foul up all the time. So you can hop it, you can slow roll it, but the main thing is you want to keep it near the bottom because that's where these guys are. So you can see that plastic there, that's a three inch paddle tail. So the action's built into the plastic makes it nice and easy to fish if you're just starting to get into soft plastics fishing. So there you go, that's another pan sized flathead. Not a big fish, but good fun. And you can see we didn't have the best of weather for this session today, but you know, shore beat's working. So give it a go if you want to chase flathead on plastics, grab a few three inch minnows, a few jig heads, and uh, get out there on the water. A few things to remember, slow down, make sure that plastic's down near the bottom. And don't be afraid to mix it up a bit as well change your retrieves a bit, change the lure colour until you find what's working for you on the day depending on the, the water colour and light and that type of thing. So we'll let this bloke go. Hope you've enjoyed catching a few flatties with us and we'll see you on the water. Magic. <laughs> to keep up to date with everything the fishing show crew is up to including our latest competitions and prize giveaways head over to our facebook page afn the fishing show and if you're keen for content afn tv is now free to join with over a thousand videos at your fingertips plus tip and tactics from bill and myself